Hey Deckers, 3.4 is finally here. Well, 3.4.2 now because of some extra hotfixes. And this has a huge amount of updates. Unfortunately, it also has some big problems. So more on that in a little bit, but let's dive into what this is all about. Mainly it's been rebased on a newer snapshot of Arch Linux. This doesn't mean a huge amount for the most of us, but if you are running in desktop mode, there are some great improvements here, not to mention all of the security patches and everything else that have been added and performance improvements. But also some people have said about a remapping of their SD card. I don't know whether it's because I'm using the auto mount script or not, but my run media SD card folder is still in the same place. Whereas others have said that their SD card has gone down into the run media deck folder. I do see a new partition in here but it's not my SD card my SD card has stayed at the run media level for some reason so do just be aware of that if you are running things like emu deck or other third party launchers that the path may have changed on you some of the nicer additions in this version is the new desktop grid which you saw there which is available via gesture automatically by tapping in the top corner if you want to change these or add them then go into the settings and workspace behavior and you can change the effects on screen edges and touchscreen by clicking on the little toggles here. So you can have it as present windows, current desktop, for example, or the desktop grid, which is the new one that they've added. But there's also a nice little addition to something called K runner, which is a global search option. So if you add this, you can now add global search. So rather than going through the menu, you can just search from say the top bar, which I've got it on the edge here. And you can then launch something like Proton Up QT, which coincidentally with the update of 3.4, there is also a new version of Proton GE at 7.43. So if you are using that, you may want to update while you're playing around in desktop mode. We also have a huge amount of general fixes, including an issue that caused games to lock up during the wake cycle if you put it to sleep mid game. This has been fixed for several games, as well as fixing the driver crash in Death Stranding Director's Cut and adding the new firmware for the docking station of HDMI 2. There's also been some great improvements to the performance profiles. This is the one that most people raved about and is the addition of the new horizontal layout for the second level of the performance overlay. While this is a great addition, unfortunately there is something missing. As you can see here, We've got the new horizontal layout at the top. Unfortunately, unless you now go into the third level of the performance overlay, the frame time number is no longer visible in the second level of the HUD. I don't know why they changed this or why they omitted it, but for some reason, when you're looking at the horizontal layout, the frame time number that you normally see, this millisecond number on the bottom right of the graph here, is no longer visible. They've also added the allow tearing option, which I'm not entirely certain what this does, but it's a nice addition if you want to be able to allow tearing in future. There has also been some great improvements to storage. This is a fairly big one if you're using multiple external storage drives. This also has enabled the new trim operations, which should increase the speed of your SD card operations, especially on the A2 series. We're getting lots of reports that this is fixing a lot of the slow SD card issues, as well as now, if you have an external storage of an EXT4 format, it will now automatically be installed. So if you have NTFS format storage like me, after reboot, half the time you need to go back into desktop and rehook up the Steam library for that drive for it to be recognized again. If that was formatted as ext4, that should auto mount in future. They've also disabled kernel DualShock 4 and DualSense trackpad emulation when Steam is running. Unfortunately, this hasn't fixed the issues where it does not recognize the PS4 trackpad in games on the touchpad. We're still waiting for a fix on that one, as well as some great fixes for the 8 bit do wireless controller dongle and other fixes for third party controllers. They've also fixed a long standing issue with the default audio device with display echo cancel sync and it would stop working. So hopefully you should no longer have to go and fiddle and unmute that as well as some crackling issues on the audio as well. 
So that's all the great stuff. Unfortunately, we do have a few bad things that come with this update as well. If you were a big fan of Divine Knockout, DKO, like we were very recently got into this game, unfortunately, because of the version of EAC it's using, it is now broken. Now you can add a command line option of hyphen no EAC, and that will get you into the game for now. But anything else that's using the libc EAC module will no longer work. So let us know if you've come across some other games hitting this issue. There's also been quite a increase in a lot of the load times of games. The Callisto protocol took a extremely long time to recompile the shaders, much longer, probably three or four times longer than the first time we ran this before on 3.3. So do be aware that multiple games are taking two to three times longer on that initial launch as well as having some issues either on the very first time running. Looking at you, Need for Speed Unbound, that still crashes the very first time you run it. So do make sure you run a game a couple of times before you think that there is an issue, as it may just be clearing out some old caches. A big one for me and a huge annoyance, as you can see, I've got nearly four hours on Midnight Suns. For some reason, even though the Steam Cloud Sync is up to date, this has lost my cloud save. This has only happened since I updated to 3.4. This is the only game it's happened to in a load of the ones that I have installed that I've tested and I've got around 20 installed right now. But Midnight Suns, no matter how many times I restart it, does not allow me to pick up my saved game. So I've lost around four hours of gameplay here and I'm not happy about it. Let us know in the comments below if this happened for you for Midnight Suns or any other games as I think this is a huge problem. I'm very surprised that Valve released this update this close to the holidays, as I'm sure that there's gonna be some other issues that come up. Let us know in the comments below what you think of the 3.4 update, whether you've been encountering any of the issues that we've seen, or whether you are just happy that you're getting the new horizontal layout and a bunch of other fixes. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.